Hey guys, thanks for checking into another episode of Jack's Mechanics. Um, today I'm just going to show you how to do a radiator on this Subaru Impreza. Um, this is a EJ25. Uh, you can get the engine code down there and the year of this thing. 2009. So. First step, I already ended up taking these trim clips out when I was doing the service um, and we can see that the leak is coming from the top tank, pretty common on Subarus so we can just go ahead and take that out. So while we've got the roller up the top in the engine bay, we need to take the uh, bonnet support bracket out, so 10mm here. 12mm here for the radiator um, mounts, 12mm on this side. For the coolant bottle, you need to basically push this tab in on the side here and twist it out. So I'll show you if I can. So flathead screwdriver, push that in like that. go so push it in pull that out and then it pulls out of the slide there and then you can lift that bottle out take this hose off twist it pull it off so now we've got access to the 10 mil for the fan 10 mil for the fan 10 mil for the fan and another 10 mil for the fan so once you've undone all that I'll take you up and um, show you the next steps from underneath uh, so I actually misspoke this is actually a super Liberty not an impressor. Um, either way, we now have the heat shield for the transmission cooler lines and the radiator itself. So um, we need to take that heat shield off. It's obviously protecting from the exhaust. Um, so 10 mil, 10 mil. And once you've taken that out, this will just come off and it will give us access to under, uh, the radiator underneath. So we've got a drain for the radiator here, so just the Phillips head, we'll unscrew that, make sure you're draining it into a tray, we've got a tray sitting on our stand, and then we'll end up putting it through the plate separator. So get that draining out, uh, and then while we're under here we can get the fan, so to do this you've got to push the clip up, and then pull that out, just like that. So you can see that there. So put your thumb in, lift it up, and pull out. And then we've got another one on the other side here at the bottom. A little bit hard with one hand, might be easier once you get the bottom hose off and the trans cooler hoses out of the way. So to do that, clamp here clamp here and then we can just pull the lines out pull the lines out up here and then spring clamp here and once the coolant's all drained out twist the hose and pull it off and then um, yeah back to the fan undo that and then we can go back up the top so fans are unplugged the trans cooler lines off and the bottom of the fan that you can see right there just sits in trans cool line hose and plug so we'll bring the car down and uh, pull the fans out and pull the radiator out so what I'll do at this point I'll take this clamp off here and also undo it here and basically twist it up out of the way um, so that way we can pull the fans out and then pull this fan out easily you can take this bottle out it just comes out it's got a little um, tag on the bottom and that sits into the fan right there for when you're putting it back in Okay, so the reason that I put it up like that is basically to stop the uh, coolant running out of the engine there um, because, the, because the hose is a bit higher, if you took it off um, you'd get constant dripping and it, it's just really annoying. So you can pull the fan out, this comes out, same on the other side. Just sit them on the radiator. Um, there is a left and a right, so if it's your first time, 
don't get it mixed up, but I mean, it's pretty easy to tell because it's for the coolant bottle. So now the radiator's free. Give it a bit of a wiggle, pull it up. There we go. So our rubber feet are still in the uh, holders, so that's nice and easy. So you just want to check that um, the radiator's the same. Uh, check that your trans cooler uh, nuts are tight. They've obviously marked these when they've assembled the radiator, which is a sign that they are tight. Um, I always go ahead and check them. Make sure all your brackets are in the right spot and, and your spouts. Once you've uh, got that all sorted out, we can go ahead and drop it back in. So our radiator's in, sitting in its feet, um, nice and plumb with the radiator support. So we can drop our fans in. I'll just sit them there and then we'll put them in at the at the bottom. So drop that one in, drop that in, um, and then next step I'll I'll take it back up. So uh, check the tap on the radiator, make sure it's tight, plug your fan in. Put your trans cooler line on, put your clamp on, still got to do that up, but I just like to face them down. It looks pretty nice, pretty easy to get to. Same with that, make sure the clamp is the same way. Make sure we're doing a professional job. Clip it in, and then they both clip in there. Plug your fan in on there, and then put your lower hose on, and we use new clamps. You can reuse the spring clamps if you want. Sometimes we've had them leak, so we always replace them. Just a uh, cheap insurance, really. So that's all on, clamps are all done up. So next step, over here, we'll grab the heat shield. And put that back up there, it goes into there. So these um, are actually screws, if I can focus in on that. See, they take a little bit of winding in the first time. And you can see that right there is like a blind hole, so it has to screw in there. So it might take a little bit of effort. Um, same on that one. So get that in and we'll be able to bring it down. So we're back up the top. Just put the bolts into the fans and just nip them up. Um, they have the captive nuts, so just gonna do them up on the 10 mils. Um, and put our coolant bottle in. It literally just goes down the side. Make sure it sits in at the bottom. Remembering that it sits in the fan. So you've got to slide it in the side there and then you just squeeze it together, all done. Put your hose on. So next we can put our radiator brackets and the bracket for the bonnet strut. So the brackets are on, the radiator is all mounted, um, everything's looking sweet at this point. I'll put the top hose on, new clamp, new clamp there, even though we didn't physically take it off. Uh, well, I, I ended up taking it off, but you know, if you didn't, um, still worth changing that clamp, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so now we can go ahead and put coolant in it. So, I have this um, little cheetah bucket. Um, basically, the idea behind this is to make the coolant the highest point above the engine. So, hopefully all the air, once it starts circulating, comes out here. And obviously the coolant replaces it in the engine. Um, in some cars, uh, you need to turn the heater on inside the car, and that's to allow the coolant to basically flow through the heater. Um, in some cars, they have a tap which might sit about here, uh, which basically is blocking the flow. So obviously, now we've drained all the coolant out, we're gonna have air inside the heater um, or in the engine, and it needs to flow through. So we open the heater tap by turning the heater on inside the car to allow flow through the heater core. Most cars have a constant flow heater, so they don't have a tap anymore. Um, they just use vents inside the dash to control basically the temperature, and it does that by having the aircon on and basically con uh, allowing heat inside um, on the heater core as well. So you have the hot and the uh, cold from the evaporator and the heater core and then that way they can control the ambient temperature inside the cabin. So um, if you're not sure if your car has um, 
a heater tap or not, I would just recommend just turning it on. You turn it on until you can feel hot air coming out of the vents, and then you can turn turn it off. And um, you don't need the fan on either. You just need to have the temperature up to to 30 odd degrees or uh, just on full heat, pretty much. So. Um, now we'll start the car and we'll let this run th through for a couple of minutes. Um, if you don't have this style bucket, um, obviously fill it up to the top of the radiator, start the car, let it run through. It might take some more, fill it up, put the cap on, take it for a drive, watch the temperature. Uh, you probably need, you know, a good hard five minute drive um, and then, yeah, we'll bring it back. So there we have it, guys. Um, temperature gauge is up nice and steady um, did have the heater on just for a couple minutes till you can start feeling hot air come out of there um, it's 40 degrees Celsius today so quickly smash that aircon back on it is bloody cooking um, yeah so next um, you need to let the car cool down oh whoops, sorry first check that the bottom radiator hose is hot if you've had a good five ten minute drive and it's not freezing cold outside I would be very very surprised if it wasn't hot um, so the bottom one should be pretty warm the top one should be pretty quite hot you should only be able to hold it for a couple of seconds turn the car off leave it about 15 minutes for it to cool down um, and then slowly take the radiator cap off and basically fill that coolant up a little bit more till the radiator's full and put the cap back on and you're good to go so there we have it guys so thanks for following me on that one if you learn anything or it helped you out in any way please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel and uh, we'll catch you in the next one cheers